listed here. Uh, I get asked a lot about Lake Vox here and there, of course. Um, I guess that's what I'm more known for. And in my opinion, you know, if you just attack the arms and the head, that's great. You have to have that down in your game. But legs, that's the other 40%, roughly 50%. It's a, it's a saying about that. 50% of the human body, it's actually 40%. Two legs, two arms, and the head. Um, with gi, it's a little bit different because there's all kinds of ways people can defend. And also with gi, the rules are different. So we're going to focus on what, in my opinion, a straight leg locks, a straight foot lock in this case, is uh, the foundation. It should be the foundation of your leg attacks. Not only is it very effective, it's much safer. Uh, doing heel hooks and stuff like that, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. As a matter of fact, I've won many matches doing those types of attacks. But if you don't uh, sharpen up your straight leg lock attack, you're not polishing off your whole game for that, that, that session of attacks. So we'll start here with that. Brother, can you sit down please? Yeah. So one thing that, that makes leg locks really effective is because in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you have opponents, they have a guard, of course, with their legs. And if someone has a, a good guard to stop me from passing or to attack me, the legs are usually the first thing I can attack. And therefore, why should it be neglected? Uh, historically in Jiu Jitsu, it was, it was considered, uh, like a, a saying was in Portuguese, that the, the, the choke is the king and the arm lock is the queen. And that's in the royal family, that's legitimate. But the leg lock is like the dirty thief. It's not an honorable thing to do. But uh, I would tell them back in Portuguese that the ladrão, the, the thief, is a, a good person to know. Can get some things done that the king and queen don't even know about. So it's good to have some knowledge about all these different attacks. And hopefully we can look at a few things today. Straight leg lock. Of course, leg lock would be leg. So ankle lock, or the Achilles, it's right here. A foot lock means you shrug back a little more with your shoulder. They're very similar, technically. They're used interchangeably. An ankle lock is also called the Achilles lock, right there. And a foot lock is when we're attacking a bit in the foot. We'll look at that in a minute. I also will mention where my feet go. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons and why I've changed uh, my, my style over the years. First of all, we'll start inside the guard. It's important for me to understand. Inside the guard, outside the guard. Now, interesting. Some people call this an outside foot lock because the foot is on my outside. It doesn't really matter what we call it. As long as we have a way to attack inside the guard and outside the guard. Some people call this an inside leg lock because the leg would be on the inside. I call it an outside foot lock because I'm on the outside of his guard. Hopefully we can get it down. Okay, so we're gonna start here. Placement on the foot, right there. So if your partner relaxes his foot, it should, it should be right to where your finger would stick. That's where you wanna lock your wrist or your forearm, okay? So around. And with key, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hold our, our lapel here. Not low. In Brazil, they would teach many times uh, a paraphrase, but the one you have your hands close to your hips because your hips are very strong. And you feel some power, but my partner will let you know right away, as soon as he feels this higher up, it's already much, much more of an issue. Okay. Because uh, matter of fact, I was doing a seminar in Brazil, and a couple of the older guys who I, I really respect. Uh, I started showing my way and it was different. They were kind of looking at me like, you know, what's this, this stuff that he's doing? And I said something, I said, you know, what I'm doing is I'm using the basic principle of posture. And their eyes opened up and they, they were all a part of it. Because I gave some credit to the old, the old style, which is true, I'm not, it's not an exaggeration. Having posture involved already is a problem versus my hands lower. Now I have to use my hips and I have to fall much for the back. So you can do it that way, but you're losing a lot of your power. Matter of fact, the fall should not be emphasized. The fall is a way, you don't really need it that much. Twisting, having this, this uh, posture and this certain amount of distance, which I will explain soon, is more important in my opinion. Once again, I'm inside the guard. If we were outside the guard, it's the same thing. And I will hold here, simple. Of course, being up high, he can already feel the pressure, okay? And there's something too, which I call the snap and the punch, which I'll tell you already feels that. And I will describe that also. A lot of things we're gonna go over today, each one of these things will make a difference. But synergistically, all together, it can change your leg lock game to be something that people have a very hard time to defend. And I got to a point in my career where uh, people would let me pass their guard. They would hide their feet, they'll put their feet on the ground. They have no guard, I'll pass their guard because really uh, they know what I'm going for. What I'm thinking about is the feet because it's the first thing I could attack. If they hide their guard for me, if they don't have a guard, it's very hard to attack the legs. So that's why leg locks are so effective, especially against traditionally trained 
uh, practitioners of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Back now, I don't want to have the top of the kimono on because I need to show uh, certain areas of the arm and, and how it holds and, and where it's located. So you don't think about it if you can. So sometimes you'll see people, they'll get here on, on the foot, and you can finish some people that way, but it's not the most efficient way. You want to be right here, as I mentioned earlier. Now, um, I want to use the middle of my forearm for the straight foot lock, or the straight ankle or foot lock. We'll discuss that in a minute. Uh, when I did uh, Russian the sambo, the sport, it's, it's very similar to jiu-jitsu, maybe in the middle of wrestling and jiu-jitsu, there's some, some uh, correlation there. Uh, the Russian guys will use, of course, not say all of them, but it's taught to use the wrist. And it work, the wrist works, but that's because they wear wrestling shoes. And it, you're not going to slip out with shoes on them, so it doesn't really matter. They go very low on the wrist, here. But they'll tell you it's not as tight. It's, it's a bony part right there. It, it hurts, but it's not the same. In Brazil, it's very common they will use this part. They go very deep. They do the, this grip. And it's okay. It's very tight. But they'll tell you, it's, it's even if you have hard muscles, it's not the same as, as the bone. They'll tell you it's tight, but it's not cutting. So this right here in the middle, right in the middle. Uh, I actually have divots in my, in my forearms from doing full for so long. Right? Um, this is a sensitive area of your body. If you look at, let's say, our legs and arms in comparison, your thumb is like your big toe, your ankle is like your wrist, your elbow is like your knee, your shoulder is like your hip. Well, your shins, which are sensitive, are similar to your forearms. So you see, this is a, a painful area. If you can condition it simply, it's not a big deal. So it's normally, it's normal when you try this out, you might feel like it's not comfortable. That's because it's a, it's a new area you could always condition, right? It's just like if you, anyone does it kind of kickboxing, and you kick the bag a few times with your shin, it, it hurts. But after a few months, it doesn't hurt that bad. So you can condition these kind of things. It's a good thing to do. It's not, it's not unhealthy for you. It won't really deform you in any kind of bad way. But this is the area you want to use, right there in the middle. So if I use the wrist, okay, with shoes on, it's fine. But if you turn, turn your foot, yeah, it's easier. Just, even with gi, uh, having a gi will help make it harder to slip out of. But Still, I don't want to give them that little chance extra. If I go very deep, it's not wrong. None of this stuff is wrong, but it's not the same. It doesn't cut in the same way. So, right here in the middle, which I have right now, it cuts it in. It's very hard to turn out of it. I tell you, it, it works. Uh, by the way, without a gi, I would just hold like a guilty grip here. Okay, with gi, I will hold across to my lapel, of course, and have a free hand. It's a better way to do it like this. Um, another thing too, if I was to hold like this, it doesn't cut. It, the surface area of the form is wider. But if I have it like this, it's much sharper, okay? So, we don't want to be flat. We want to be up like this. That's why having the guillotine grip is fine. And of course, you look at how a guillotine grip is used and a guillotine is very similar. You pull up here, it's very similar to a guillotine. Simply here, locking here. But with the gi, we're gonna hold across. So, we are here. Roughly, I'm in the middle. I'm a little bit high. I'm not really, I'm gonna show you how to slip down to get perfect here, okay? Right now, uh, my feet are off, but that's fine. We're gonna first work on where my hands are, and they're up to my chest. They don't have to go higher. I don't want them higher uh, to my neck. It's unnecessary, okay? But not down here. So up here, and I build this posture right there. Of course, I could fall, but if I use the fall without, without he'll feel it eventually. But it's much more effective if I use posture. Simply this. Now here is the problem. As long as we understand it, it's not a big problem. But it's a normal thing. People will learn this from me or from someone else who does a similar style. And as they go up, they'll drop their hands. And so really, it didn't work. You have to keep your hands up. All right, you can start like this. Almost how a cat would stretch his back. And you can learn this posture like that. So simple. But if you drop your hands, it doesn't even matter. You're not employing your arms. They're not being strengthened by your body in the same way. That is not the same as this. So in reality, I don't have to start at like this, but it's going to show the difference. Kind of like how a cat would stretch his back like this. And I'm gonna get posture and my head will look up just because it's easier to learn with our head looking up. Later on, you don't have to look up. I could look at my partner as long as I'm picking my head up and opening my posture. But right now, if we can, have the presence of mind, we're gonna lift up, 
and look up. It helps you to open up your posture. With my partner, even without a gi, I can use one arm. It's not a big deal. You want arm, it still works, okay? Works. Now, what if I am, let's say, outside the guard? Fine, same thing. I'm a little high, I'm gonna show you how we sit down. We get low here, okay? I can shrug my shoulder back for the foot lock or stay on the Achilles. They're both very effective, okay? So first and foremost, and I prefer to show the finish of a submission or the finish of a takedown or the finish of a sweep first. Now, some people disagree with me and that's fine. I prefer to show the finish first because we have more of an idea where we're going to end up in. If, if I show you 10 ways to get into a full lock position, but we can't reliably finish the full lock, it almost doesn't matter. If a boxer has 10 ways to hit someone, hit their opponent, but they don't have an effect, it doesn't really matter. I'd rather have a boxer have two good ways to hit you. And if you can, if you can harm, if you can actually do damage, that's an effective punch. If you have two good ways to do a takedown, fine. Rather than 20 ways to try it, it doesn't work. So that's why we're looking at this general way of finishing the footlock. Using this part of your form versus here, which is not wrong. Here, which is not wrong, just different. Here, cutting and using the posture. And yes, it is. It is basic jiu-jitsu. I'm using the basic principle of posture. And that way, it's looking at the old traditional uh, teachings and coming to some new ideas, hopefully. Okay, let's do one more uh, problem area. Let's say uh, a comparison, a situation that will happen for sure. In that I locked up the leg, but I'm too high on the calf. Okay, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna fix my, my arms? Because I'm too high up on the calf, Yes, you can make, make a calf lock work, but it's not the same as a foot lock or an ankle lock. What I'm gonna do is, actually with the gi, it's a little harder to show, but still, hold him this way, okay? I actually have to, I'm gonna exaggerate the movement to show it. I have to turn and fix it. So my point was here and I was, I was on the calf. I, I simply, it's a seesaw, I call it seesaw movement, okay? I make a little adjustment. It's something that you have to practice a lot to, to make it look smooth. Because I'm not gonna let go of the whole foot. Really, it'll catch, it'll catch right here. And the more you train it to where, um, I even have some of my students that do it probably better than me, they'll, they'll, do it, they'll get there by two motions, and they'll, they'll be there on the, on the spot, okay? And of course with Gi, the person will reach up and grab my lapel, if that's something, we'll look, we'll look at how to mitigate that problem. We'll look at that, okay? But it's also, don't forget, I can always let go, lie down and pass the guard. So I don't have to be too greedy. At some point you get too greedy, it can be used against you. But like any attack, you could win off any attack and you could lose off any attack, of course. So a simple drill, seesaw movement is, I'm too high in the calf, I'm gonna rotate the body. I don't fall back. I'm more just, I kind of readjust, okay? By moving my arms out and fixing it. You have to play with this a lot of times to, to make work. Let's see if you can try it on me. My foot, he's on, so, so he's, he's a little high in the calf, so rotate. There we go, look at that, first time, very good. So, every punch done correctly has, of course, the snap of the punch. A triangle done correctly has a snap, a little angle, it, it locks in. A gi choke has the snap of the wrist. Every submission, every throw, every real technique I know has that translation or that comparison. So what's the snap for the, for the straight foot lock? It's simply this, that's all it is. So if my hands are like this, where it says this, it's, it's night and day difference. And people won't see, they won't pick up visually upon what you're doing. How about like this? How about this? If I do a gi choke, I have to use my, my wrist. That's correct. That's the snap and the punch. It's actually the same movement, just by coincidence. A guillotine, that's the snap and the punch. If I don't do this correctly and I stretch with my legs or I pull, it's not the same as if I have this even incorrectly. And that's why I say, even this snap and the punch, well, under your shoulder, if I use, let's say, there's nothing at the end of it, but that same power, just that right there, that wasn't even my shoulders, that, that, would, that would not feel good in your nose, okay? Right there, right? That, sorry, it, it's this, the snap is this little, it, the energy is, is carried through my arm into my fist. If I have nothing on the end of it, it's ridiculous, that's not effective. So if we have a foot lock and we don't have the snap, the punch, you'll submit some people, but not the same as you will with this. Once again, it's not this. There's people that do that in ways you could. It's simply that. That's all it is. That's the snap of the punch for the full lock. So now I'll do it to you one time. So it's funny, I'm here now, right? 
So you see, see my, my wrist is, is relaxed with the pressure. He feels it eventually, but watch this. Already he feels it, it's a huge night and day difference. It's simple, but not many people know it. Uh, or maybe they wouldn't put it in that way. Hopefully it does make sense. So now my brother has me in footlock. Now I've got the other one. Yeah, he sees it, grab it there. Now, see this wrist down? Yep. Yeah. Now, yep, yeah, now chest up. Chest up now. Look at that. It's our three times better than before. Okay. And what he's doing also naturally, he's rolling back on my foot, which is a foot lock. And that's fine. That's a that's a good job thing. That's something that before I forget to mention, I said earlier, a straight ankle lock is right here. They look so similar because they are. Okay. I used to snap in the punch, I'm on the ankle. I'll tell you. But if I was to shrug my shoulder out here, that's a foot lock. And that I didn't have the snap. The snap makes a big difference. The straight ankle lock is right here, and the foot lock is just a little shrug. Back on the toes. That's the small difference between an ankle lock and a foot lock. But the snap of the punch is the night and day difference that is that simple to do, okay? And it's so effective that if you do it correctly, let's say it took you a week to get it done. Whoever you've been training with a week before, they'll think, well, how did this person get twice as strong in a week? It doesn't make sense. And uh, it's just because we're doing it at a, at a higher level. And these fundamentals, I don't like to use the word basic, it sounds too boring, yeah, basic or fundamental, regardless. Um, the advanced fighters will use the fundamental positions done in a more advanced way. They're still fundamentals. Doing fancy things, it's really nice to see, but that doesn't necessarily mean advanced. It means doing the fundamental movements and the ideas at a higher level, that's advanced. This fundamental idea can be done at a very advanced level changing angles because now we're looking at uh, where my feet should go and do I fall to my side or not? And I'll address that right now. So now we see I have the same foot I was going for. If you look at my left leg, 90, I don't know, 95% of people in the world, do a little more, they put their foot here and over. That's, that's not, can I say it's wrong? No, it's what most people do. But if you do that against me, it's so easy to escape because that hip is free. It's completely free. He could roll. You know what? If my foot's here, it's happened to me before. So I actually kick you in the face. It's happened to me. When I fought in Japan, that was, well, that was, of course, a fight. You can kick someone in the head on the ground. It was legal. Okay, so that's a problem. If I go for a full lock and the person kicks me in the face, what if it's an accident? That's just a sign that he could, don't kick me, but show that you could. See, it's a problem, okay? If my foot is here, though, now for the kick, it won't, it won't reach me. It won't reach me. So I actually have this hook, I call it the door stopper. It's on this hip, and this is over, okay? Now it's a problem, he'll tell you, okay? It's a problem, that's why. Also, because I have some influence of his right leg, try to roll a little bit, it's much harder to roll. Now watch this, roll, he's gone, he's gone. The momentum is developed and he can continue with that, that movement and usually get away pretty easy. Also, here, he can mount me, step, step. he can stand up and mount me. Pretty, pretty easy. Now I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's a lot harder. Now I'm not gonna go. It's a lot harder now because I'm here. Uh, also here, take both hands, grab the heel, both hands. He has a heel look. That's a heel look actually, okay? So why would I wanna put myself in danger to get maybe get him disqualified, but maybe now I'm hurt. And also now my, my leg lock doesn't work. This foot is here. Right here, grab for the heel, right? It's nothing, nothing is there. There's also, I mean, we're getting a little more advanced, but I want to complete this idea. He has me in a foot lock here, and the foot is here. There's also, it was in the finals of Abu Dhabi in 2003, and I faced a, a very high level leg lock op opponent, a Luta Libra, Libra guy from Brazil. And if my foot was here, well, he tried to get me this knee compression, which is legitimate submission. It's a legitimate, he's in trouble. He's risen, but it's a problem. He can't finish the foot lock at least. And if he doesn't watch it, it's, it's a, we'll tear your knee apart. But if your foot is here, now it's not the same. And because my foot was here, it didn't work on me. And I actually won that match by, by heel look, okay? So there are, there's a few, one or two problems about putting the foot here, but there's 20 problems I to get here. And I, and okay, now let's look at why people do that. Why is that? Actually, I should say, let's fall, let's fall on the same side, okay? So, recap. Having my foot here, he kicked me in the face on accident or on purpose. 
this hip, this hip and this leg are free. He can do, do that. He can stand up easier. He can roll out easier. Okay? There's this heel. If he wanted to, I'm in trouble. And even my knee. We can look at that later on if we have time as well. Of course, that's illegal at brown belt and black belt, but that's a legitimate uh, way to stop uh, foot lock. Now, so here's what happened. Quick history lesson. Back in about 1995, uh, that's how people did the, the foot locks. They would just go here and go straight back. And it was working, okay? But then you get mounted a lot of times. So what would the people do? They started falling to their side. But it took about two years. I think in 1997, it's such a simple thing. Everyone just push their foot down, they'll jump over. So, so it took about two years. Push your foot down. Yep, that, and people jump over. Exactly. So, that simple idea, no one really did it for about two years. I mean, the idea to fall to your side was how you finish foot locks. But the reason was to stop the mount. So, two years after that, people developed the technique to where they just push the foot off your hip and jump over. Uh, small detail. People teach it, in my opinion, wrong. It's not this way. I can't move. It's actually the arm that's uh, across, and I just I just go. That's that's all it is. So we have to look at the history because why do people fall to the side? That's why. That's why they fall to the side. Okay, to stop the mount. Okay, but if you fall to your side, now I see that happening. I jump. Right, I'm over. I'm gone. I also have this heel. I mean, I have it right here if I wanted to. I make jokes about this. Because most people don't know about this, this heel look. I mean, it's a heel look. I've got him. I've got him right now. He'd have to let go and roll to escape this. Imagine, he has me in the foot lock. He has to roll to escape. It's illegal, but a lot of referees don't know about it. So you can probably finish someone and say, you know, sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't grab this foot. <laughs> but actually, we, we know it's the same as a heel. It's the same thing. Just using the fulcrum of my body, okay? And he'll tell you it's really in there, okay? So far on this side... I will never say it's wrong. I will never say my way is the best way. I'll just say my way is different. First of all, by him falling, I saw what he's doing, right? Okay, it's hard to mount, that's true. I have, this is an option, but be careful. You can hurt someone with this really, really bad, so please be very careful. It's just something to consider. But I can jump over and escape. But now we go back here. But now, because I have the far door stopper, I don't need to fall to my side now. Mount me. It's very hard to mount, okay? So the, the reason people fall to the side was because they were getting mounted, because they weren't controlling that far hip. So here, I don't fall to my side. Now watch this, push my foot down and jump over. It's, it's not really a problem because he can't get over my foot that easy. And if he does, push down, if he gets, it's not a big deal because I didn't fall to my side, he didn't really get around, my, and now I'm back in his guard, or I can switch to that foot. I've done that before in matches. Guys, have gotten over, I got the other foot. So we're just looking at something that it's, it's still fundamental differences. There's nothing flashy or super fancy. A lot of people won't even know why you're putting your foot on the, on the other hip, okay? There's other reasons too, but let's say that, oh, I, and I mentioned very important, very important, see, is this correct? Knees still squeeze together. Now, this is, what are you doing? That's, it's fine, I, re I recommend that if you have, let's show, like, if you put your foot here, it's okay, I recommend if, if the person you're facing is a lot taller than you. Otherwise, it's not that effective in my opinion, okay? I usually go over, but this one here, knees have to be together, knees together. Knees are still together. Yeah, that, it's, see, that's normal. Fall to your side, fall to your side though. See, it's, it's like, that's the problem, okay? I'm not saying it's wrong, maybe I should stop saying it. But I'm telling you, if you do that, everyone's seen that before, and they can escape. You're telegraphing the movement, okay? Um, well, there's many analogies I can make about this. There's also, well, there's other reasons, let's say, to have your foot here. Lock it up, a little higher your chest, snap with a punch, now chest up, and now go back. It's already better than it was before, way better. And also, let's say I, I, he feels he's going to lose position. He can just let go past my guard or, or just face me. He didn't give me part of his back. and um, I didn't read what he's doing so, so easily as if he fell to his side. So that, that's good. So that's just looking at where I put my feet and why. I'll also address soon, uh, in a minute, how I don't fall back, I don't scoot in. I sit down where I'm at. That'll be next. Addressing how do I sit or do I fall or what? And this, is, this will coincide with me showing how do we get in the situation, but important that I would try to note that if I get the foot, I don't 
fall down. And I also don't scoot in. It's neither of those. I sit down in the relative place where I am. So here, that's my footlock. So there wasn't that giant, uh, I didn't telegraph as much by falling back. And also, let's say I fell back and he read the move, he's mounting me, even if I have the door stopper, okay? But harder, but it can still happen. So on the, on the vision of straight on, let's say, and I'll show how we did this in a second, okay? I'm gonna step up. That's it, just like that. And of course, I'm not trying to do it fast, but you see it's efficient. So let our button. And yeah, we're staying inside the guard, and we'll look at outside footlocks in a second. But my point is on the back, there we go. Simple, right here. Okay, I step up and grab at the same time. It looks like, see right here, it looks like I'm gonna pass it. I step up, hold, and I got the person right here in trouble. Into trouble already, okay? Notice that I didn't fall back for no reason, and I did not scoot in. This is taught, this idea is also taught. But I lost my posture. I don't have, I can submit someone here, but it's all power now, okay? So, what is it? That's actually my door stopper already. That's my door stopper on this side, okay? But I grab at the same time. If my opponent was to pull his knees to his chest, I will, now, I will, I will not pass. I will use that to pass. If someone hides their feet from me, I will use it to pass for sure. And yes, if someone is completely thinking about their feet all the time, their guard is going to suffer. And if they hide their feet from you, uh, pass. It's fine. And that's uh, why I see this. The self-proclaimed full luck experts a lot of times don't have their guard passing down. So if you hide your feet from those guys, you know what they're going for. You know, they're not going to pass their guard. They don't know how to, I'm not saying they don't know how to mount. I'm saying they're usually so focused on being a full luck expert that you can read their game and it doesn't work that much. So if you have a passing game mixed in with leg locks, those, those kind of complement each other, okay? So all I'm doing is I step up and I hold the opposite foot. It looks like I'm gonna pass here. Step up, grab, same time. So you get your partner, just, uh, just do this. I, I want the feet here and I just want you to step up and grab. Step up and grab. Step up and grab. If his feet were not here, if they were down on the ground, I will now pass. This is not where I would look for leg locks. Okay? The more his legs are out there trying to stop me, the easier it is to grab the legs. So I'm stepping up, the foot is there, and I have this in a situation. Now, I fold my foot and I sit, and this foot goes right over. My knees are still together. It's very important I'm not like this, very important. And already he's in trouble, but I need to, I can seesaw down to get the position better. It's fine. The snap of the punch is right there. I'll tell you, it's already felt. So let's see, can you try me? There we go. Now, other way. Yes. One more time. Now, he could pass here. He could. Yes. It looks like a pass. So people will do this to stop this and sit back, fold your foot. Look at that. And they're in trouble. And we will address what if they reach up. We will address that in a second. Although it is a pain when someone is constantly on your gi. And that's one thing I want to mention. You know, leg locks, gi is great. And with gi, it's... Uh, there's many more threats. And if you get in trouble, you have to earn your way out. Of course, it makes sense. But with leg locks, it's the opposite because most people really can't defend leg locks. All they do is grab the gi. If there's no gi on, they have to learn how to escape leg locks. So that's why you see more leg locks without gi. That's just the way it is. Uh, so we're stepping up, same opposite. This foot folds, I sit down, and this foot comes around the hip. My knees are squeezing together the whole time. This foot, by the way, should be arched up on the hip. That's not as good. It's okay, but that's better across. And what he's doing is going inside. That's okay as well. It's just a different style. It's not wrong. It's it's fine. I know some good foot lockers that do it this way. I recommend though, that's when you can't reach the hip with this foot. I would come under this. Okay, that's fine. So stamp it up and grab. Fold your foot, sit down, and this foot comes out and it's over and I already have the position. If you fall to your side, it's not wrong, but people have seen that, that's what everyone in the world does, and they're already jumping over your foot. So far, we've done only inside leg locks. 
Once again, some people call them out. It doesn't matter. I'm saying right now we are inside the garden. Now, next, right now, we're going to do outside the garden. I call it an outside foot lock. Okay? You can call it a diagonal foot lock, a cross. I don't care what it's called. What I mean is I am now here. Okay, Now I'm here. I grab the same way. My feet are the same way. Notice, if I was inside the garden, it would be the same. But now, how do I finish it? Now I do fall to my side because, push my foot down, jump over. It doesn't matter. It, see, it doesn't matter because uh, the foot's so high, he can't clearly, well, a lot of people don't notice, jump over. They'll go, oh, he jumped over. All you have to do is take your foot out and put it back. Realize, once again, here, if I fall to my side, jump over, I can't put my foot back now. So when I said I don't fall to my side, I, I mean inside the guard. Outside the guard, I fall to my elbow, not to my shoulder, to my elbow. All the things went over so far. The, the snap of the punch, the posture, it's all the same, but now it's more powerful. Here, I can turn more, I can turn. So we, add, we actually add more pressure here. And also, we will do this next, real soon, if, they come, if they're climbing up on your, your uniform. It's harder for them to escape this uh, outside footlock or diagonal footlock. It's much harder with Yi because they would have to grab this one. Stop it. And so far away, it's hard to grab. And yes, we'll look at how to get here as well. It's different. Holding up high, fix your feet, door stopper there, here, and I'm on my elbow. It's fine. It's a lot of pressure. Okay. Now, if I just fall with no snap of the punch, I'll tell you, it's not the same. Snap and then go. It's much, much more effective, okay? And the fact that I would turn all the way like I'm putting my chest on the ground, it's very powerful, okay? And if he jumps over my foot, it's not, it's not the big deal. It's not a big deal at all. And we're gonna go this real soon. If he grabs this lapel, that can, that can be a problem. That can be a problem. But it's very hard to grab. They usually grab this one. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter so much. If someone can stop a foot lock by grabbing here, that's a very, very, very strong individual. Grab there. It doesn't matter so much, really. It's, it's very hard to stop. Very hard to stop. Especially if I have the posture and the snap of the punch. If you don't have the snap of the punch or the posture, yeah, it's probably not going to submit them. But what's really cool about being here is I can always let go and get around the guard. That's one benefit of being here. Before going to then grab my lapel. On your back, lay down. Now this one, I do standing. It's the same as this pass, okay? But as I do that, your opponent is gonna keep their leg there. Because there. And yes, if, if he let his legs, just let his legs flop there, and, I won't leg lock that guy. I'm passing, okay? I really can't leg lock him. He didn't give me his legs. So this is why someone with a better guard is easier to foot lock them, okay? As I throw this by, I'm stepping here. I'm holding. But I thought I already have the situation with my point. Very powerful, okay? I take that part off. Here we go. Throw, 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 throw. I step in. Here, hold. And I just fall on my elbow, and my foot goes to the hip. Right there. Right there. In reality, it's step. It's pretty fast. Got him in trouble now. And now jump over foot, jump over. It's not a big deal. Yes, I can go straight up, but for this one, I do like to fall to my elbow. So simple, simple, simple. Standing, throw the legs by, simple pass. When they try to recoil their leg to stop me from passing, I'm gonna grab that foot in the diagonal or the outside foot position. On my elbow, with the same, all these principles, this, this, and turning is very powerful. And you can have more success with this usually with key. So the big problem when people have a hold of, of your uniform, your, your lapel, set up. Let's look at this. Outside first. I mentioned earlier, but up here. He has to grab this one to have a real chance. Okay? If he holds this one, it's not a big deal. Usually then they're just holding on and they're not really escaping at some point. If they let go, they're gonna probably think about how to escape. And of course, having my feet here will make a big difference than here. Right? So grab a cross and reach up for this lapel. It's very hard to grab possible it's very hard if someone does grab it though remember I can always let go and pass the guard I can always do that okay but yeah. 
Reach up, grab. I mean, what, what's this hand doing? Right? So it is hard to grab, but be, be aware. Reach up for it. Don't let it happen that easy, okay? I don't even have a snap in the punch, but what I do and I go, it's much, much more powerful. Knees are still together. Reach up and grab it. Grab it. Let's see. See, it does, it does make a difference. If he has it in too deep, people are going to say, oh, you know, yeah, I guess so. You could do that. But now it's hard to grab this foot. I can grab the heel right now, but that, that's not do that right now. I can grab the heel right now, okay? He grabs this. If he has that too deep, I mean, let go. Yes. But now I'm thinking more about getting around uh, the guard now, probably. If he's, already, if he's already grabbed that. He's thinking about survival. You can usually pass the guard at that moment. Uh, inside the guard. I'm here. It's easier now to grab this lapel. It's easier. Notice that it's the side that I would try to finish with. Okay? Now, I could try to fall on my side, but notice he's going to push my foot down and I'll jump over. Okay? Yeah. This side. Okay, reach up and grab. That's why you want to have this arm available. Okay? If he does grab, it's more of a problem for me for sure. Okay? I've seen some guys use their, their knee and try to, but it doesn't work that well. To try to hurt your arm, eh, I've not had too much success with that. So truth be told, it's better to stand, pass the guard. As you're passing, he, he leaves his foot there. You get it and you fall. It's too late for them to grab your lapel. And that's the, that's the best way of dealing with grips. As I was mentioning, you know, passing versus leg locks, yeah, they complement each other. So yes, there's ways to let go and break a grip, but usually then, they're getting up trying to mount you or something. That's if they got enough up on you to get over your door stopper. It's, it could happen. It's much harder than before, but it could happen. So please, we have to keep this in mind that when I have him here, let's say inside the guard, he steps, he steps up and he, he grabs. He has, he has a good grip on that, okay? Don't be afraid to let go, shift this grip, fall back, and pass the guard. It's just like that. Notice by him sitting up, it's really hard for him to stop me from passing this way. Very difficult, okay? So he has it right here. Let, let go of the foot, let go, post off. If he can still hold on, it's very, very difficult to do that, okay? Notice this is very important. If I'm here, he's already, ste he's already stepping up. He's already uh, on top of me. That's why the door stop is very important. So grab, and we're just gonna push right back, fall back down, pick the straight up, and we're gonna easily pass our, uh, our partner. Okay, now we get into something that it's uh, just my terminology. Closed circuit versus open circuit just means my feet are crossed or they're not crossed. So far what we've done is all open circuit. The advantages of each is, let's be rough if I could say, open circuit, you can jump in those things really fast. I can have you within a half second into the move and people can be tapping already. Closed circuit, take that extra step of looping around the leg and crossing your own feet together, but they're harder to escape. That's the rough breakdown of it. One is a little harder, uh, little harder to get into, but it's harder to escape. The other one is very fast to get into, but in a comparative sense, a little bit easier to escape because you're not so locked in. But I, I have some students and some training partners that there's so much better with open circuit and they don't like closed circuit and vice versa. I have, it depends on what you prefer more. There's four accepted uh, closed circuit situations. And of course, there's a few other exceptions and uh, special scenarios. Let's start with the 50-50. Most common. This is one of my favorites for sure. Simply leg is up. Our right legs are interlaced. Now, if my feet are not crossed, that would be a, a problem. So we're gonna cross, we're gonna triangle our feet. Now the 411 is the same as the 50-50, but my legs change to here. This is much harder to escape from, but it's not 50-50. He does not have the same attacks that I do. It, to his knee, it's the same effect as what he was just in in the 50-50, but I don't have the same repercussions. There's not a real good counter attack he has right now. He's in big trouble. Now, unfortunately, for the rules, unfortunately, just in my opinion, a, a lot of the things we could do from here involve heel looks, not straight for luck. And you get to a position where, actually, no, this is illegal because I'm over. Yeah, that's considered illegal. But it's something to think about, okay? The way we do it, my feet will cross and my knees are facing him. They're not like that. Unless I was going for a knee lock, which is a different attack, okay? So if you do the 411 correctly, 50-50, look at this detail. I want my knees facing him. In essence, I had to scoot my hip out a little bit. I have a huge advantage versus my point right now. A huge advantage. It's something that most people wouldn't see, but I had this angle on him. 
he does not have the same attacks that, that I would. If it's 4.11, now my knees have to face him again. So I scoot away. That's the detail that makes, if someone knows all these positions, but they don't know this, this little angle, uh, you're going to have a huge advantage on them. Yes, this is illegal in the IBJJF uh, rule format, I understand. But it's still something we should understand, okay? Now, back to 50-50. And there's two other ones, by the way. There's two other ones. Triangle. Here. The best way to open this up, as simple as it is, it is something that you can pull off on a very advanced person, maybe once or twice, and they're going to know it's coming. It's as simple as this. And here. And I'm going to scoot away. It's powerful. And, of course, here is more, this is, is more obvious attack I could have. But let's look at that later. Open it up. I'm going to now swim in here and get this locked on. And now, remember how I said outside of the guard? Yeah, fall away. It's a similar finish to open circuit outside pull lock because I'm outside the guard. In essence, I'm outside of this guard, you see, okay? So, my feet are trying. I'm going to put my hand on the knee. I, I don't push so much with my arm as, well, I do push as I scoot away. And that powerful movement of my hip transfers into my arm pushing and it opens the feet right away. If someone knows about this, yes, they can reach out and hold their feet. They can do that. But if that's all they're doing, I mean, they're just, they're just waiting for you to let go and go to a different position. That's a good sign. It's frustrating, but that person right now is just like, they're thinking, I'm in big trouble, okay? They could actually do this and stall. It's true, okay? But as soon as they do this, it opens up very easy. One more time. Here, hand on the knee, and I scoot away and push. One time. Leg is over. It's okay. Simple. My feet are trying his triangle too. On the knee. And scoop. It's very powerful. Now, uh, there's all kinds of ways to fall back down, take my legs out and pass. There's all kinds of things we could do. Some people teach to get up this way. It's just not my style to do that, but it's not wrong. I've seen great people that do that. Okay, but once I open this here, I take this arm through, lift it up, and then I fix to the to the shape of lock. And it's very powerful. And that's a legal footlock. This situation, because it is 50-50, it's easier for someone to stall there. And they can reach up and grab your lapel. That's true, that's possible. And here, and someone is reach up to my lapel. You know, it's a, it's a pain. It's a pain, I understand. That is something, okay? But I can shed this, okay, and open this up. And I can now, that's easy to get. But right now, we're going to go inside, fix this, and we're in big trouble, okay? That's to start out with the basic attack from the 50-50. The 411, it's probably my favorite um, uh, to use, but it's illegal in the IBJJF system. Uh, and we will look at soon some heel hooks and some other twisting attacks that are very, very effective. And the 411 is, in my opinion, the, the best one. That, those are the two internal reap um, of the closed circuit situations. As in any rule, there's always an exception. So specifically with gi. I found this a very acceptable alternative to the door stopper. Where is that other foot? You know, what, what can I do? This is for inside the guard. Outside the guard, I fall to my side. And I already explained, hopefully it makes sense, why I normally don't fall to my side inside the guard. But there's an exception to the rule. See so, you now, brother? Here. This is the most powerful straight for luck I know that's legal. Okay, I mean, legal IBJF. Okay, here, same. Same. This foot here is fine. Now I fall to my side. Now watch this. Jump over my foot. Jump. It's really hard with that. That this foot is key. This left foot, and it's very powerful. And also, reach up, grab, grab my elbow, grab. It's really even if he has that. Look, see his arm. See his arm. And think about this. We'll go over some more details with that right now. So I step up, door stopper. I fold, but it's, I, I, I fix my feet right away. And then look. Look at this, the snap and the punch. I'm on the way to put, but it's very tight here, okay? And it's very tight. So now I have this pressure on the ground. Already, it's uncomfortable, okay? The snap of the punch, and then I use, like I'm stretching to the ground. And this is really an important detail right here. If I was here, he's gone. So if I fall on my side like this, he's gone. If I go straight back, door stopper's fine. But sit up and grab, grab my gi. Look at this now. Take your foot off, and you can you can press it and let go. And I got now in trouble. Have my foot. Yep. So now, 
And this one, by the way, see what he's doing now? This is fine. You can have your foot under. You can, you can, as long as he is over, right there. Now fall. That, that's, now, now put the snap in the punch. Good. Now go to, your, go to your stomach to the ground. Yeah, stretch. Now watch this. See, this is very hard to grab. Okay, but usually what happens is they reach here. Now use your knee to on my elbow. Now let go, okay? Usually, I've never tapped, maybe I have, but I don't recall someone holding on. They'll let it go, okay? Because it, it, it's, a, it's an arm lock, so go pressure, go. That's the way to make them let go. If I have a strong grip, I'm gonna let go by myself. This is an acceptable uh, alternative. It's actually fine. I would even say that if this was happening, if I did this in a MMA fight, even if they didn't tap, they're not gonna be uh, standing up and bouncing around their feet. They're gonna have a severe mobil mobility issue, okay? This is a legal, straight for luck, and this is devastating, very powerful. But I would only fall to my side if I have control of that bottom thigh. One of the big mistakes people make with this is this. <clears throat> they, they put their foot on the hip, and what happens is push the foot off. Yeah, that's, that's all. And just by coincidence, now we are in another closed circuit situation. I believe they call it outside Ashi, I think so. I call it Toquinho because the Husma Parares from Brazil, he's the best in the world with this position. He gets here and there, he gets your heel. And this is my least favorite of the four closed circuit situations, but for some people, it'll be one of, the, one of their favorite ones. I only have a heel look from here. If I have a straight foot lock, scoot in. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen, okay? That's why it's my least favorite, but if I get the heel, it's devastating, it's very effective, okay? This is counted as a closed circuit situation because my feet are crossed on one side. Um, you can see that there's more give, more leeway, and I don't have much to flow into out of this. Like to turn him back this way, it's very hard. Okay, he puts weight on his knee, he's climbing to my back. So it's, a, it's something you could do, but it's not for straight foot locks, it's for heel hooks. And it's not my favorite, but it is a good, good position. The last of the four closed circuit situations is uh, the Russian knee knot. I guess if you're from Russia, you just call it the knee knot. It's um, definitely illegal in IBJJF rule system, but it's um, it's something else to think about. So sit down, brother, face me. So we had 50-50. We had 4-11. We had the outside ashi of the kingdom. Now we have the knee knot. There we go. This is the, when you're here, you're in big trouble, obviously. Um, if you're already doing this, you might as well heal look because you're already reaping the knee. So it's right there. It's very hard to escape out of this. It's done. That one we can look at soon. It's not my most commonly used, but it's something to think about. It's also for people who roll a lot out of foot locks. This will lock in them and they, really can't, they cannot turn at all. It's not the most commonly used, but it's just one uh, to have under wraps and understand it, it exists. Okay, heel hooks. There's five type of leg locks. There's the um, straight knee lock. There's the ankle lock or foot lock, it's the same thing. There's toe holds, there's compressions or calf slicers, same thing. And there's, there's heel hooks. Heel hooks have a very bad reputation, but it's more important you train them correctly and you train with people who are being responsible and it's, it's not, not really that big of a deal. Uh, they're very effective. Matter of fact, in my academy, um, they're catch and release. We do them. I don't teach them to white belt specifically. Uh, straight for locks, I teach the white belt. Yeah, no problem, I don't see why not, but that's just me. Heel looks we start doing, but we're always catch and release. If I get you in a situation and you're not tapping, I'm letting go of the heel look. I don't wanna hurt my brother or my friend or, or a student or a training partner. If you have that mentality, they're not that dangerous. But also please understand, when we're dealing with twisting uh, submissions in general, I mean, I will compare a straight foot lock versus a kimura. A kimura is more dangerous than a straight foot lock. If my shoulder pops in a kimura, it's much more of an injury than a straight foot lock popping, okay? So twisting submissions are more dangerous than straight submissions. A straight arm lock is not as dangerous as a heel lock. Heel lock had that, that bad reputation may, maybe because People turn the wrong way, they hurt themselves. You get certain people that go really hard, of course. But also, I believe it's something to, to involve the knee itself. The knee is, it's like the structurally weakest joint on your body. If you, if you look at the size of the muscle around the joint, it's not a very, it, it, it bends up and down. It means back and forth. It doesn't go left and right, different directions. It goes one direction, okay? Or let's say two, back and forth. 
And especially if you've been athletic your whole life, you've been running a lot, I've seen a lot of people that they don't have the same nerve sensation in their knee as much as they would have in their finger or their shoulder because all, all the impact and all the sports people have done. So maybe at the point you feel pain from a heel look, it's about to be an injury, so you have to be very careful. So if you're in a heel look, as soon as you feel tension, you should tap and your partner should tap as well and you don't hurt your, your partner, that's the main thing. If we were doing takedowns, um, there's ways to throw people to hurt them, but there's ways to throw people and not hurt them. And also, if your partner knows, knows how to fall, you can practice throws. But yes, you find people that try to hurt others with throws and that's landing on your head. That's even more dangerous than a heel hook. So more important is, is who you trust and you know who your partners are, how you train is more important than what you train in my opinion. With that said, heel hooks. Let's look at, once again, the finish with the arms. We we'll look at the leg. Legs are actually the same with the door stopper or closed circuit from 50-50, 411, uh, the, the knee knot or the tokino, the, the outsarashi. Um, those are all closed circuit situations. I use a lot of, of that for helix, a lot, the closed circuit. Open circuit, it's all door stopper. Now let's look here. Inside the guard, forget the legs for a second. How do we get the heel here? Okay. I'll show three different angles. Now, so interesting. Uh, I've seen many people do it this way and it's not that effective. To reach with their elbow down, turn it doesn't work really at all okay um, reaching out of your arm doesn't even hook it okay what I need to do is I need to turn my whole body see that turn the heel okay it's fine and it doesn't matter so much which hands on top yes I prefer this and I do I prefer it on top but I beat guys like this the biggest problem is second. People will try to get the heel in the forearm area. I mean, let's say the muscle, okay? So if I was to reach here, it doesn't, it doesn't, it slips right out. When I talked earlier about the place where I hold for a straight foot lock is right in the middle. Well, for a heel lock, it should be in this area. Up to your wrist is even better. So for a heel lock, you wanna go by your wrist. If it goes to here, it's okay, but you don't want it here. That's the main thing. So people talk about which hand should be on top. That's a, that's a minor uh, importance compared to where the heel is on your arm. It should be in that area, right from the middle to your wrist. So if I turn correctly, which I am, my wrist is fine. You can grab any way you want, really. Okay, this is better. Guess what the snap of the punch is? This, I did it. That's, for the heel look, it's this. It's not this, it's very similar though, okay? So if I, if I don't have a snap of the punch, he'll tell you it's much different already. He's in trouble. Now, I don't have a door stopper. He, he can roll out of this. He can easily escape right now. But he'll tell you there's pressure right here, okay? Simple, facing uh, our partner, and we're gonna slip and turn. It's like my tricep turns his toes, and I get down here and have that snap, and now he's in big trouble. How do I finish it? I don't turn to finish it. Let's look what happens if I turn. It slips out, usually, okay? So turn to finish, or to get it. When I finish it, I actually fall away. I fall to my back and it does, so I am turning actually, but I'm not sitting up and turning. When I fall away, it's rotating by itself and that's how you finish it. If I have the door stopper here, which I do now, it's a problem to escape. If I had no door stopper, he, he could already turn around, it's a harder turn. So, snap the punch and I fall away. He'll tell you right now it's a problem, okay? Very careful. I'm not gonna, I'll trust him right now, watch. Let's see, get my heel. Door stopper, door stopper. Yep, lock it up. Okay, and go back. Where's the snapping punch? Snapping punch. Okay, it's in your forearm. Get, get it in your wrist. Just turn, there we go. Now snap the punch. Now fall back, go. Look at that, okay? This is actually, this is why the door stopper is important. And so do the other side now. So see, door stopper, yeah. So turn, all right. So now put pressure, go, go. Okay, so roll, roll your wrist up, snap the punch. No, other way, other way. There we go, now go back, go. There we go, okay? You gotta trust your partner. He's not going hard and trying to hurt me, but that's how you learn. And as long as you're not going to try to see how much pain you can take, you have to help your partner to say, okay, twist this way, turn that way, fix it, help him because from a different point of view, you can help your partner. It's that simple. I turn to get it, but I fall away to finish it. And I keep my arms tight. And the most important thing is that it's in this area. If you catch the heel here, it slips out almost every single time. 
And that's another interesting, um, the guys from Sambo, they, they wear wrestling shoes. So a lot of them, they don't even use this detail because they got the shoe, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. By the way, there are very technical legal lockers from Sambo. I definitely know that. I've done that style before I did Jiu Jitsu. But I also won a national championship twice in Sambo. So uh, this is stuff I picked up over, over my career from different styles and just see what little bits uh, here and there that work best for me. So Helix R, using this area as, as, the, as the focus, that's the most important thing actually, okay? I don't care which hand's on top. I already said which hand I do prefer on top. That's the most important thing. I turn to get it and I fall away to finish it. And you need the door stopper so they can't turn that easy. Or if you have a closed circuit situation, 50-50, they can't turn. That's very important as well. So here, the door stopper is a prerequisite or it won't work. And yeah, let's look now, 50-50. You see now, once I open this up, it's very easy to get. Small detail, closed circuit. I was here, but now I'm here. I, I straightened my, there, I still crossed. That's so he can't, he can't turn anywhere. If he wants to push, push my hands off with your foot, It'll, make, it'll just make it worse. <laughs> Matter of fact, right now it's pretty much done, really. There's ways to stop this from happening, but once this is done, I mean, it's, it's over. I won um, Abu Dhabi 2003 with this exact side, 50-50. At that point, there was no 50-50 guard. It didn't exist. I was using it for a long time before that. And I actually won Abu Dhabi, best day of my life. And I looked on the internet later at night, and I, I read Portuguese, I can understand it. And some very respected, um, Professores of Jiu Jitsu were saying that, um, you know, what's this gringo? Gringo just means foreigner. It's not, it's not such an insult, but they were basically saying, you know, this, this gringo comes down here and this is not Jiu Jitsu. And I was, I was a little bit disappointed, but I looked at my medal and I didn't feel that bad actually. You know, I was, I was fine. Three weeks later or a month later, I hear about this new position called the 50 50. I'm like, what is it? I want to see it. And it's this. Okay, so. I definitely am not the first person in history to do it. There's no way, absolutely there's no way I was. But before I did it, it didn't exist at the position. Now it exists, and it's something that people do specialize in, but not usually for helix. So if you have this just you know, in your repertoire, you understand it, you have a, a big advantage over the average person, okay? Now, from here, 50-50, here's a big problem a lot of people are gonna make. You're gonna, you're gonna turn your knees. You wanna keep them there. My legs, are, my legs are more designed to keep them from rolling. I don't push so much because I confirm them to the ground. So now you see my legs, they stay right there. It's very effective, okay? Now let's look at this. Let's say open circuit from here. Look, I got them. It's, it's really, oh, and one thing before I forget to say, it's a, in Portuguese, the word boot is bota and the word put is bota. So you hear bota, bota means put the boot on, put, put the foot strong, put your foot strong. See this foot arching? Yeah, these people do this to stop straight foot locks. It's the worst thing to do for helix. It's suicide by helix. So if that's someone's uh, defense for a straight foot lock, it might help them, but not for helix. So go figure, okay? So if someone puts their foot off, it makes it really easy to turn, okay? So how do we learn to little bit more? How do we do this? Look, your partner's gonna sit just like this, door stopper here, over here, and we're neutral, sitting up. I'm gonna turn, my elbows on the ground, lock my hands, and nice and easy, you don't have to finish it. Go again, go again, go again. Now, what if we fall, just fall here? What if we're here now? How do I get the heel? Well, it's, 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 we'll look at that right now, how I do it. But once I get this, it's, the, it's done. There's actually no give. So be careful here to not hurt your partner. What I do is I actually bring the, 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 it over. He'll tell you right now, it's already done. It's already, it's already about to tap, okay? So although it seems harder to get, this is actually the easiest one to finish, okay? I'm, I'm literally bringing his heel over. I got it right now, okay? And if I had reaped his knee, right? It's just right there. It's so easy to get. So the main thing, we practice neutral, we practice here, and we practice reaped, because they're all effective, okay? And that's one benefit of being open circuit. I can jump into any of those from the guard or from passing the guard. I can just jump in those things. The closed circuit situations, which we did address uh, roughly, they take that extra step. They're fine. I love them. I've won several Abu Dhabis because of it. But I would suggest you get a few attacks down from open circuit 
and a few attacks down the closed circuit. All the four acceptable closed circuit situations, you might like one of them or two of them. Uh, learn them all, but you're going to prefer one or two of them. Stay with that so you get more of a strategy and a more of a game plan, but also get one or two of the open circuit. And that way you're going to have a more uh, balanced leg lock game. So looking here at all forms of leg locks, and I get asked this a lot, mostly about leg locks. And hopefully I've made it clear, that's not my pure thing. Uh, I, will, I will attack someone's legs if they're available, meaning they usually have a good guard, okay? Or they have good base, I'll attack a leg. Um, let's say you have a, a, a strong wrestler in your guard. Well, it's harder to sweep a wrestler. They're more conscious about not being turned, but because of that, you can get their arm easier or you can get their neck easier, okay? And by the way, wrestlers think that Jiu-Jitsu guys have, you know, terrible base because their whole thing is knocking people on their back and pinning them. So a Jiu-Jitsu guy is going to be more like he'll accept the sweep versus give the arm. And that way you could use someone's style against them. So leg locks, I can use his good guard against himself because he has that kind of game plan. It's a similar comparison. So leg locks are definitely, this another tool to have. And like anything, it can be stopped. Uh, they can be used against you. And uh, it takes a while to get down to be comfortable doing them. And the more, the better I got doing those, I was taking chances, a lot of chances. And I've had matches where because I went for a leg lock, I lost. It's happened before. But then again, all the times I took chances, I got better at taking chances and I refined my style. So it's just another good way to attack. And I would say keep that in mind as well as you know, having your whole style develop. Now we're looking at uh, one of the more important and also more accepted leg submissions, the straight knee lock. I don't call it a knee bar, but whatever they want to call it now. Um, the straight knee lock, I believe, might be legal at purple belt or at least brown and black belt for sure. And the, you know, they changed the rules a lot. I'm not sure at the moment I should check into it. Uh, in my opinion, even if it's not legal at your belt, you should start learning it soon because a lot of people, they'll say, I'll learn that later. By the time they get that belt, well, they're actually a white belt and let's say knee locks, they never train them. But if you've been training them for a while, if you're a professor, your coach lets you at least, uh, by the time you get to, let's say, purple or brown, you've had some experience doing those techniques. You will have a big advantage over the others in your same division. I want you to learn with your partner, him on his side, and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, if he's straight on his back, it doesn't work so well, just to learn. I'm going to take the bottom leg, and it's much like an arm lock, a straight arm lock, but it's, it's with the knee now on the leg. So I'm going to take the bottom leg, I'm going to get close to my opponent, and I have to squeeze my legs very tight here. I'm going to hold the toe, all the toes like that. Not here, please. If you do this, you're just helping them to escape. He's turning, okay? It doesn't work that well. Let's hold the toes in this fashion. Already he's a try to turn, turn right now, turn. It's very hard to turn already, okay? In essence, if I had his toes here, that would be the job. But I've never had an opponent put their feet, their foot here. So grab it, do like a rear naked choke it, put it next to your bottom ear. Now he's in big trouble, okay? I put pressure, he feels it, but see, he's not tapping right now. What I have to do is fall on my back, and now I go, he'll tap. He'll tell you there's a big difference from this versus this, that little detail makes all the difference in the world. So bottom leg, why, why am I attacking the bottom leg? Well, let's look at this. Give me your top leg, give me your top leg. Well, now in a match, you can, there's a few leg walks I would do, like there's a few, yes. But now he can st stand up, stand up. People can stand up and you'll be in this really awkward position. So bottom leg, your feet should be crossed past his body, but tight to him. They're not like this, tight. The knee should be right below your, your, your belly button, let's say. Right there is fine. Hold all the toes. Not the top of the toe, please. Here. You're going to grab like a rear naked choke, but put it under your, your bottom ear now. And yes, if I put pressure here, people will tap, but not everyone, okay? Follow that little angle to your back and now go, and it makes all the difference in the world. Here by itself is not the same. He'll tell you that little angle, go, it's, it works very well. So now, the way I get here, uh, it's, it's one of those moves also, 2003, I, I beat a very accomplished black belt with this, one of the better guys in history, and it's because it's a move that not everyone was doing at the time. After. Yeah. So for this technique, we have we want to be around the knee, 
So we can't be here. By the way, I, there, there's even a few. There's a few hip submissions and stuff. There's ways to pass and stuff. But right now, for this, I want to be around the knee. Okay. And the thing is, if my opponent let me just smash into the back, that's different. It's hard to knee lock someone on their back. But when they get up their shoulders, that's the time I can do it. Okay. You see, if someone allowed me to smash, put them on their back and not move, I won't go for the leg lock. I mean, I'll pass their guard from here, okay? But I'm pushing here, he gets up though, and I go over, boom, and it's just like that, got him, okay? So, I attacked the top leg, but it became the bottom leg. And that's why I like to show the finish first, because there's many ways to get to that situation. But instead of looking at uh, 20 ways to get there and not know how to finish it, let's have this one or two ways to get there and know how to finish it. And this is a relatively straight, uh, safe submission because it's not twisting. By the time they feel pain in their knee, you have to go very hard to hurt them. And if they got hurt, unfortunately, it would be more their fault, you know? So a straight knee lock is safer than a Kimura. It completely is. I can't see how someone could disagree, although they could. It's their right to disagree. Uh, a straight knee lock is very painful, but people have time to tap. Uh, you know, you could do this many times, make mistakes, and people could get on top of you. But the more you practice this, the more you, you can always correct yourself. And it's not like a, a, a wild chance. It becomes a higher level uh, success rate the more you practice it. And especially if, you're, if your opponent has never seen it before, I mean, you have all the advantage in the world. And that's a straight knee lock from half guard. Okay, toe holds. This is gonna be legal, a brown and black belt. And this is also a twisting submission. So almost similar to heel looks as far as in injuries could happen. Just be careful. Uh, one thing about uh, toe holds, there's a whole principle uh, that's specific to toes, and we'll go over that right now. First, let's look at how do we hold the toes. Just sit down. There we go, that's perfect. Okay, this to learn right now. Simple. I wouldn't suggest doing this in a match right now. I'm just, we're looking at how to get, simply gonna hold. Look, some people teach this way, some people teach. I put my pinky finger on the pinky toe, and it's okay to grab with your thumb this way initially. It's okay. We're gonna turn it. Use your body. Now we would want to change our hands to double clamps. Now we would want to. This is okay, it's not as strong though. That's why people teach this. But if I grab like that, it's not as much of a grip as this. This is a grip. There's a clamp, grip, clamp. So I wouldn't use a clamp initially. I will grab, I will turn the foot, turn the toes, uh, all the way around, and I grab. Now I would change my thumbs, and right there. And the what's the pressure? It's not down there, it's to him, the pull. By the way, he could roll right now, okay? But we're just looking at how to lock this on. Grab, turn the toes around. Now you fix it, okay? And yeah, the snap of the punch is this. That's all it is. That's a snap, okay? I don't turn that as well as like this. He'll tell you it's a big difference, okay? That's the snap of the punch for the toll. Everyone's a little bit different or very similar, whatever. That's it. So some are doing this, some are doing, this one is just like this. That's the tightness of the move to do it. So told, let's say the most used told that I do is from half guard. And it's specifically for when someone puts a triangle on their own legs and they're really have, they have very strong legs. So half guard, this happened probably, this is back uh, in the nineties for sure. Uh, yeah, I was, I was a purple belt and I was facing a very strong Brazilian opponent. He, I forget if it was seven or eight, he got a seven or eight zero on me fast. The guy was very strong. And this was geese on. This is back then where you could do almost any submission, almost any submission. So here, that's what he did. So he was he was tired. I worked my way up to, I think I was down by one point. I think it was eight to seven. So I worked my way back up. And uh, his corner was saying, Espera, espera, what's the thing? They're saying, hold on, you have 30 seconds left. You have 30 seconds left, hold on. And he's, he's really tired. This is a final, so he's a very tough guy. And he, I, here, I can't get my leg out. Really, he's very tight. He even had an underhook on me. And I look back at his foot. Look at that. It's right there. It's right there. And now, I got him with that, okay? Now, it's funny. If his leg wasn't so tight, it's really hard to get this. It's possible. It's very hard. So you see how when someone has a very tight confirmed guard, in this case half guard, you can get this told. Now let's turn 180. Look at my toes. They just like this. To get it. Uh, I know people will teach this. Come back. It looks very pretty. 
they will, they will roll over to get this. Now, but now, grab my toe, grab my toe. See, so don't do that. I, I wouldn't suggest doing that. People teach you that way. It looks very pretty. It looks awesome. If I get your foot first, I have an advantage. But if you have if you have the resistant feet, you grab my feet. We're both stuck. Okay, and we can't move. And maybe I even had one one. There was one tournament where Frank Mir faced one of my friends, Jeff Higgs, and they both broke each other's feet. <laughs> and then I, I took gold because the, the the winner was supposed to face me. Well, I wouldn't face my friend, but. Uh, anyways, I'm saying don't give the person that chance. You get some very tough people, maybe too tough for their own good, and you know it's, it's not necessary. So no reason to roll with this. This is the most basic, simple. It's very similar to what I showed in the beginning, and I I grab the pinky toe with my pinky finger. What is the rule for toes? It's simple. This, simply this. The leg that I'm attacking, in this case, his left leg. I have to control his opposite leg with my legs, which I am right now. I am controlling his right leg with my legs, and I go for his left leg with this, with my arms, okay? If I, let's say, let's say I have a knee lock, okay? That's why this doesn't work. If I don't control that leg, look, you can turn, it won't work. But watch this. You see his right leg I have controlled? Give me your left leg. Watch this though. I got him now. I got him. That's the rule with toe holds. Whatever leg you're attacking, you have to control the opposite leg with your legs or it won't work. So any kind of a submission I can imagine. Here's an example, half guard. Let's say I'm gonna go for a knee lock, let's do a little over here. And I make the mistake of doing this. Grab a toe, grab, uh-oh, look. He can control your leg, off your legs. Look, he has my right leg controlled with his legs and he has my, that's correct to hold. I'm in trouble now, okay? That's why, by the way, when you do this knee lock, you go over. You don't crawl your foot over like this. That's an effective, got it. I'm in big trouble right now, okay? Really, big trouble, okay? And yeah, maybe you resist, maybe you get hurt, okay? This is a, he just did a toehold on me to counter a knee lock. Of course, I don't teach the knee lock in that way, but that's to show the, the principle of whatever leg you attack with your arms, you have to control the opposite leg with your legs. Let's do one, slide on. Open guard, a little bit. Look at this now. Let's say in here, and I roll here. Look at that. I got his leg in trouble, and I got him in trouble now. I got him. See? The leg I'm not attacking, I have with my legs, and the leg I am attacking, I have with my arms. Yeah? That's the basic rule for toe holds. People teach it a little bit different. They put their hand higher or lower, peaky finger on peaky toe. That's how I teach it and it works. And this is a little more accepted than, than heel looks, but uh, injuries can happen similar to heel looks. So please be careful with twisting submissions. That's my breakdown of tolls. So leg locks don't work in a real fight. Oh, what was it? <laughs> well, they do. The thing is you have to get good at doing them. And if we want to make that, are we talking about like, like a street fight or like what? Yeah, well, say in a street fight. Street fight, you know, honestly, that's where a neon stomach works real well. A neon stomach, I wouldn't use on a trained fighter. It's too much space. Knee on stomach, you take care of business and you, you leave or you, you, you take care of your, your safety, your well-being, okay? So yeah, of course, a, a fight, a real fight, you know, it's different. Uh, but but it's just something else to attack. You know, I, you, know, you know Bruce Lee didn't believe in kicking above the waist? It doesn't make sense, but it works. It does work, okay? I would never argue with Bruce Lee is, is more experienced than me in striking, I would, I would imagine. And he's a, he's a very accomplished individual, but but people have their certain opinion on things, and I wouldn't say they're wrong, but it doesn't mean someone else is wrong either. I, I've been in plenty of real fights in my life. Just I grew up in different countries and stuff, and it's just something else to take take into account. Um, what about, uh, I've heard, oh, karate doesn't work. Yeah, but look at the Ultima Shida. <laughs> he makes it work. He makes it work. This is how you train it, you know? So if I'm a leg lock specialist and that's all I do, Really, yeah, yeah, I understand. Also, there's more than one person. You don't know what's going on. You, you might be in rocks. Yeah, you know. Um, that's something, too, a, a lot of fighters, that they, they never put the gi on because they go, yeah, you, you know. In UFC, you, you, you're not allowed to wear a gi, actually, just so you know. In UFC, I fought for UFC. You cannot wear a gi in the UFC. <laughs> Maybe 25 years ago, you could, but not anymore. So it makes sense in their mind. Why would I want to put a jacket? But then again, in real life, you have a jacket on, someone grabs, or even a shirt, you know, I, I could use a shirt to choke you. It'll ruin the shirt, but it, it will work. There's definitely ways. So 
What are we talking about? It's just a different thing you can attack. The funniest guys, I think, are the ones who say, oh, you know, I'll just poke you in the eyes. And I go, well, I can do that to you too, you know? So there's always people who think this and that. And in, in my experience, it's good to practice, be well-rounded in certain things and see what works best for you. And certain opponents will, they'll be vulnerable to one specific thing and another point will be 100, 180 degrees different. You know, some person's gonna be very vulnerable to this attack, the other person won't, and vice versa. So if you have a well-rounded game plan, I think that's the best approach. And I would never say uh, leg lock is the best answer, but it's funny, I was, I was in Russia, and I heard, I heard the guy saying, he said, um, the reason I prefer leg walk over arm walk is because if I'm at bar with my woman and a man grabs her behind, Imagine they break his arm, but he goes to vehicle, gets Kalashnikov, comes back and dead. I'm like, <laughs> straight legit. But if I break his leg, it's going to take a long time to go to collect the vehicle, get Kalashnikov. I was like, okay. <laughs> so there's always a reason, I guess, right? Um, then again, the most important thing, of course, and I don't want to be boring, but you know, don't don't try to get in fights, really. So don't try to, but if you had to, yeah, real fights is just, okay, so what works? Well, if I grab your leg and bend it this way, it, it does work. Yeah, uh, but also, how about this? The real fight, don't pull guard in a real fight. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. You could win that way, but I wouldn't recommend doing it if you're in a real fight. But it doesn't mean that guard doesn't work, or you might need to use it. You know, uh, and, uh, as much as I like, uh, like John Jones and Cormier, Cormier is, is top level, you can imagine, in wrestling. But against John Jones, he had to use guard. He had to use guard against John Jones. So so anyone, anyone who would say, yeah, the guard, don't use guard in a fight. Well, I'm not saying I'd want to, but you would want to have that kind of uh, that kind of experience to where in case you had to use it, you could leg locks, at least learn them. I mean, how could that help? How could that hurt you, right, to, to learn? Not to just rely only on leg locks. So that's my little two cents there. I think be well-rounded, be open-minded, and yes, leg locks do work, yeah. It, it's, as far as what level you should train leg locks, it's just my personal opinion. Uh, all, all my guys and my girls, twisting submissions, yeah, we'll put them on and we'll put a little pressure on them, but we're not trying to hurt our, our, our friends. So why not learn a straight foot lock? I think it's fine, but I would not teach it to replace passing the guard. That Absolutely, I would not teach that. Um, they're both important. So I could see if someone was relying upon, I've had some students who are wrestlers come in, tough kids, like 19 year old, years old, and they can take you down and get your foot pretty easy because they're a wrestler. Think about it, take you down and have your foot. But I have to make sure at some point say, we have to stop doing foot locks now because I need them to graduate and start passing the guard. So I'll, I'll put people on like, I won't, not, non, non-authorization foot lock status for a while. Yes, I've done that before. If someone is so, let's say it's impeding their progress to learn, the, the, to, to broaden the horizons, I think it's okay. But it's just, that's an opinion, you know. Um, I, I'm not gonna show someone the first day coming in off the heel look, that's true. I won't show them um, um, plot, um, plot either though. And so I'll wait for the right times to do things, but we don't now have injuries in my academy. And my guys are not just footlock specialists. My guys and my girls, where they go, for, it's predictable, they go for a leg lock, they get mounted. No, we do all this kind of stuff. It's just my opinion. Um, it is normal when I was very young doing karate, I wanted to learn the jumping, spinning, back kick to the face. Uh, instead of the punch to the chest, that was boring, but really you have to learn that first. You have to learn that first and eventually you can learn this fancy stuff. So it's normal when someone comes in, it's, it's very confusing. You have this, what, you know, why the legs? You know, well, it's just another thing to attack. It's another thing to attack. Um, let's say, let's look at boxing, kickboxing. Boxing would help you if you're a kickboxer. Absolutely, it would help you. Um, in that sense, you would have to, um, you don't want to be kicking the back of your leg. For anyone who doesn't know, the back of the leg doesn't, you can't resist very much. A good kicker could, could really, really hurt you with that. Even in the front, but not as bad in the front. So you'd have to change your stance, keep your boxing, but adjust it to what is now kickboxing. So let's say we're in a tournament where leg locks are not allowed. Fine, I respect the rules. But what if you're in a situation where someone grabs your foot? I mean, you, you should know what to do. Hopefully you should know what to do. So back to the whole leg locks in a fight. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things we do in Jiu Jitsu. A triangle choke would work in a fight, but I don't want to be on my back with someone a triangle choke if there's other factors around me. I want to be able to, I want to have the ability to leave if I have to. That's what Chaco, my, my friend Chaco said. You know, and it makes sense. If you have a good level of grappling, you can decide if I want to leave. 
You can't, if you can't hold me here, I can, I can survive. I can run or I can get away from you, right? Also with grappling, I can, if there's situations where there's someone you, you don't want to hurt, but you have to stop them somehow. I call them the drunk uncle scenario at a wedding or something. Almost every family has one of those uncles. You don't want to hurt your uncle. But there's ways you can stop him without hurting him at all. And that's when they can really get about grappling. So an overall just survival, just real life scenario is grappling is awesome. And, and the fact that, what if I got in a fight in an elevator? Well, it's really hard to stop my grappling. If you got in a fight in a football field, it would be harder to, to implement your grappling. Um, I also take into account, not just for fighters, but grappling with walls. There's walls all around us all the time. And how to use a, how to use a barrier. Um, we also have the drills. They're more for fun, but you have two against one grappling. Those are fun. And the whole thing is you have to last for just a minute, and not tap. But you get you get to a point where a high level black belt can can out grapple two guys, for sure. Can choke one and hold the other guy off, and then once one guy taps, he's out. You know, and the, you, you can get to where you can out grapple two or three guys. You can do it. I wouldn't suggest doing it against two or three strong guys with experience. That's a big problem. But yeah, they, we're just looking at relative ideas. What works, what doesn't work. I think what works is what you put your time in. And I wouldn't rely upon one thing specifically. That's why I'm not a footlock specialist. I would never say, maybe people would think I am, but uh, takedowns are important, pa guard passing is important, sweeps are important, back attacks are important, learning things like crucifix, seat belt, um, leg locks, all this stuff is important. And it can be used in different ways against different opponents. And as I said, some one opponent is gonna be very vulnerable to this move, and the other guy will be opposite. There's also people I face that are like, for instance, with all, all due respect, someone like Palares Tokino. He's so damn strong. He's so damn strong. Facing someone like him would be a different strategy than facing someone else. And you know what? If footlocks don't work, uh, what, what if you fought Tokino? What would you do? <laughs> At least have a game plan because he'll grab your foot, and you, you, you would rather he didn't grab your foot. So let yes, leg locks work. Um, and the average person can't pull them off very well because they don't train them very hard for a very long time and they don't start in certain situations in jiu-jitsu schools it's almost always they're not even criticizing it's typically around the world it's mount cross side half guard and guard and maybe a few more things and that's all you train from my my students do all this but we also start in the most random i mentioned earlier on your knees what if we start here if i get on top we start again how about he gets up how about he gets up and gets away we start this is basic wizard over -hook, under -hook situation and this is something that wrestlers do this a lot and guess what? If I do this for, for five years and my opponent doesn't, I'm going to have a huge advantage here. That's just one example of situational wrestling, situational stuff. Mm -hmm. You start from all these very specialized situations that your opponent or your next competition has not done. And it's one more thing you have an advantage over than your opponent would. Because the average person doesn't do all these little extra things. And once again, that's not even real sparring. That, that's that's live go, specially, spe specialized situations. And so... Leg locks would be just another situation like that, where if I have that advantage and he doesn't, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna win the match usually. If uh, if you had your own country and I had a country and we went to war, and let's say our our armies were the same, but you didn't have an air force, and I do, it's a problem, bro. It's a problem. So any kind of weapon that I have and you don't have, you know, it, it's it's a problem. It's something I could I could use. I want you to fight my fight, not fight your fight. So if someone doesn't know about leg locks and you do, it's a big problem for them. It's a big problem. I can't see how anyone could deny that. But how much preparation are you going into in a high level match when it comes to game planning, watching tape, figuring out yeah. what part of the game you want to steer towards? It's, it's funny with me and watching tape, I, I'm not such a, uh, I like to watch matches and, and learn. Of course, I don't usually think so much about what's my opponent going to do to me? Because then I'm usually just I'm playing defense the whole time. I'm worried about what he's going to do to me. And sometimes you'll train for an opponent for let's say a month and your opponent will change. Or sometimes your opponent will have a whole different strategy that you didn't think about. That's, that happens many times. It's always good to know that few things the opponent's going to do and be aware of it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put too much trust in that because you don't really know what he's going to do. And so I would just hope to, let's say, build my strengths up and, and lessen my weaknesses. And, and I think that's an overall more positive way to look at things. And like I said, sometimes you train for this one opponent and they change the opponent. So now it's not even him. Now with that, Jocko is one of his, his favorite words is dichotomy. You know, so there's always the exception to the rule. Uh, with that said, one time it, it really bit me bad uh, facing uh, Wushesha. 
And we had a match where it was, it was really good. We're, we're zero, zero. I took him down, he took me down. He had me in a submission. I had him in a submission. It was a good match. We were moving a lot for big guys. And I got mounted on him, but I was in quarter guard. My foot was still stuck. So there's no points. He bridged me over like an Olympic wrestler. He's the one damn Brazilian. He, he, he has like that Olympic wrestling. Just, just, just up and over. He took me over and got two points because he put me on my back. So he won. So I should have watched tape on him. So with that said, yeah, there's always uh, the good and the bad of anything. I don't know. I'm just I'm just pretty open minded. Uh, I, I would always hope to be respectful to to those who've been around longer than me. But uh, I, I can't see how someone would say, you know, that doesn't work. This works. There's certain things I wouldn't suggest, but there's certain things I wouldn't want to um, let's say underestimate. Uh, wrist locks can work. You know, more with gi than no gi, but Anything can work if you, you spend time and, and um, you, you get some expertise in that area, they can all work, in my opinion. Do you have any tips on mindset before going into a big match? Mindset, it's because everyone's a little bit different. I, I, could, get, I could say what I do, and usually I, I can look at my students or my training partners and what motivates them, um, let's say before a fight. Let's say before a fight. Uh, I, was, I used to coach Mirko Krokop. I lived in Croatia for a little bit. My Croatian is really bad, but I lived there for a while. And he, before his fight, he'll play poker with all his friends. Up until he has to warm up. He'll play poker. He's not thinking about the fight. He's relaxing in that way. Some people want to be alone. Some people want to talk to their loved ones. Some people, they shouldn't talk to their loved ones. It depends on the person. Um, some people want to listen to music. Some want silence. Uh, some want to be talked to. Some don't want to. It depends on the person. So. Uh, when I was young, I used to listen to like, like the hardcore music to pump myself up. But now I'm older, like I like to listen to calming music to get myself more relaxed. So it depends on the person, and and for some reason I've done a lot better when I when I can imagine. Let's say I, I find an opponent and he's uh, somewhat disrespectful. I don't know why it, it just it motivates me a lot more to to beat that person, and it's harder for for me to beat someone that, that seems like a humble person. Everyone has their own motivation, you know? So if if, um, if someone was to tell me, and it's happened to me before in the UFC, someone said, uh, I'm, I'm betting against you. That's what I want to hear because I want to prove that person wrong. I want you to lose your money now, right? But when someone says, I'm betting on you, it's like, bro, don't let me know that. It's like too much <laughs> pressure, right? You know, when I fought in front of my home, my home crowd, seems like an advantage. I don't, I prefer to fight in their hometown because I have less pressure. And, but see, other people feel the opposite. They feel like I'm at home and they feel, they feel more like the energy comes to them. Everyone's different. So as long as you find what motivates you, what kind of personality you have, and you find your way to relax, and the closer you can, you can get to being in your moment and not thinking about anything else, the more you can practice doing that, I think the better you, know, you can do that. That ridiculous riddle, I mean, there's no such thing as now. There really, what is now? There's no, there's no now, really. Well, the closer you can be to whatever now is, the closer you can be, let's say, an eighth of a second, sixteenth of a second, which I don't know, whatever, a second. I mean, the closer you can get to that that focal point, which is now, the better you're going to do in your career. So, being nervous before a match. Well, think about it. You're not in the match right now, so why be nervous? And you know, it's normal. It's normal. How do you deal with that? You just breathe. Well, sometimes if you tell yourself breathe. That's annoying too. Breathe, breathe, it's annoying. So you have to get yourself to where you're actually breathing and you're relaxing. And the more you compete, the more you will be relaxed. And some people say, how do I relax? Well, do more competitions and you, you will force yourself to be relaxed. And then, and um, I remember fighting in Japan in Pride. It was right about 100,000 people in the audience. It was such a big arena. You couldn't see with lights off. You couldn't see the other side of the arena where the people were sitting. That's how big the place was. And that's a whole different thing. Imagine fighting in front of 100,000 people. Maybe it was 105,000. It was, it, was, it was huge, a huge amount. Um, but for some people, having that match in front of 20 friends is, is, nerve, is nerve wracking. But the more you get to relax, the, the more calm you'll be and you'll graduate at certain levels to where you're hitting new heights. So everyone relaxes in a different way. Do you feel like the 105,000 people got to you at all? It didn't really get to me, actually. It was like a dream, actually. It was, it was a crazy experience. You know, and also, when I fought in, in, in UFC, there's more people watching, but it's, it's like camera. I mean, there's, of course, there's like, I don't know, 10,000 people watching the live, and there's millions watching 
you know, on camera. So it depends. And when I, my first fight in the UFC was, was in Los Angeles against Alisa Sakara, UFC 60. And I felt the extra pressure because it was in California. But I still, I, I did well that fight. It was a good day. Um, I don't know, everyone has their own challenges. Some people, some people could use their family as motivation. Some people, they shouldn't think about their family. That distracts them. Um, some people want to hear, you're gonna win, you're gonna win, you're gonna win. Some people wanna hear that. Some people wanna hear, like, you know, I, don't, I don't like hearing that. I wanted to hear about, I always hated hearing, oh, you're gonna, oh, that guy's no problem. You're gonna beat him easy. I don't wanna hear that. I wanna hear that the guy's tough. So, so I'm, I'm on guard and I'm very sharp in my mind. Um, regardless, you put yourself in this situation for a reason. As long as you know you're doing this sport for a reason, you know, why would you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation? It's to become better. It's, it's to improve yourself. And if you, if you have that deep understanding and you make it simple like that to yourself, I think that's, that's one of the more important things for competition. Aside from getting better and improving yourself, do you have any other reasons that you can be? The, the reason I got into martial arts, I grew up in, in Central and South America. I grew up in uh, Panama during the, the Panama invasion. And this is not a poor me story, but it was just the type of situation where, um, I, you know, I didn't look Panamanian, I didn't speak Spanish, and I got, I got into a lot of real serious fights. And, and the way I can explain it, think about, think about if someone from another country went, came in, and I'm not, I'm not some super pacifist, like my dad my dad's, was military, I'm all, I'm all support the military. But think about if, if, if you were living in your country and some other country came in and, and you lost a bunch of family members, you know, maybe your uncle died or something. So there's a reason, even though it wasn't my fault, there's a reason that I was in this, this let's say, maybe a rough time. And I always had that need to want to defend myself. And then of course, you know, uh, well now I speak Spanish, I speak Portuguese, and, and you tried to think about how I could improve myself instead of just uh, be negative all the time. So. There's all kinds of reasons, and hopefully you enjoy what you're doing too. Because if you don't enjoy jujitsu, it's, it's gonna be hard to stay doing it. So I also enjoy doing it, and and then now it's my life. So I'm, I'm very blessed to to have found something that's my life now that I enjoy. It. You know? Has it affected your enjoyment at all turning jujitsu into a profession? A little bit because it's a job, but as long as yeah, I still love it. But yeah, it's the same. For instance, if there's a UFC fight on, I don't. I don't Unless, unless I know someone fighting it, I don't really watch UFC. It's not, it's not because I hate UFC, it's just I'm so used to that environment. It's just, a, it's, not, it's not the magical fun thing. But I think that that's part of getting older too, you know? You know, things that used to excite me when I was uh, 21 is not the same now. It's just, it's, really, it's a part of getting older. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's normal. I think it's normal. Yeah. Cool, man, what's been having, honor having you here. Great to be here. Thanks for coming. Hopefully, you all learned a few things, and uh, hopefully, keep an open mind and just train hard, get better, and enjoy it. Thank you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Uh, further going into that knee lock, and that is my favorite entry into that. There's also ways. I think I have time. I could show the back step into it, which is also pretty effective. So, the question was, if someone climbs at your back, yeah, when you're what's exposing your back. So let's see, let's see this. You know, there's always that moment. If they saw, they knew what you're doing as you did it, yes. Of course, someone could take advantage and maybe win because of that, okay? But I have to pass the knee. Okay, so I go over, right? Now, what happens? Okay, see right there? I got him. He's got him. Okay, not a big deal. But if he try, 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 if he try his leg, that's a problem. Now he probably got back, okay? So if this happens now, what I do is, how do I, I, I grab the top leg and I pull it to me. So now get on top, go. Come on, go, go. Can't go that far. And if I need to, I can, I can go to his back or something like that. But from here, we have a toll. I have a toll right there. Or I open this up and I can get the bottom leg back to here. And I got back to this. So it's basically, the problem is the triangle legs, and then they climb up. Get on top. If they get here, just so you know, if this was a fight, this is worse than mount. It's not worth points like a mount. This is worse than a mount for sure. This is a terrible, this should be like worth eight points or something. This is terrible to be here. And once this happens, uh, what do I do? Go to my knees, take my foot out, whatever, okay? And that might be, you never know, he might've got two points for that, okay? So we have to, we'll do that little drill um, right now. The drill is, is, you don't move until my leg passes your head, okay? You don't, you, you can't cheat, okay? And yeah, you're trying to escape, okay? And let's see what happens. Realize that I've done this drill so many years that 
you'd be surprised what happens. I may not get the knee lock, but it's very hard for him to get me in a compromised position because I do this drill so many times. Now you already know what's gonna happen. So I don't have to. And by the way, one last detail before we do this drill. The, the, it works for me pushing and he pushes back. That's the time to go. Okay, and also I pivot on my knee. Okay, so don't cheat. Don't, don't move until my leg passes. Ready? So watch, ready? And go. As you see, it's not the end of the world. Let's say I, I abandoned that, foot, that leg lock early even. Go, train. We're going back to it. You see how I, I didn't just fall and he got on top of me and I feel helpless. I mean, I'm still attacking his leg and I have a somewhat a, a positive direction. I can still go. I can still attack this and I can still move. Now we got, we're to the forward heaven now, you know? So you can get to where this is a, it's like your world. The more you do these kind of moves and you get familiar with these. And I, I, make, a, I make some analogies. It's like a, learning a new language. I mean, if you speak a language that your friends don't speak, it's, it's just unfair. It's really unfair. That's why it's considered rude. Like if you talk, like let's say uh, if there was someone here that was speaking Portuguese, it's kind of rude if I just talk to him and he understands the English. It's kind of rude because I can be saying whatever and he will not understand. If I know about leg locks and he doesn't, I have a huge advantage over my opponent. One more time. So, right, there we go. Ready, go. <clears throat> Okay, it, it becomes high percentage. And if I miss it, I can always get back on top, right? That's why we have to have these drills. There's technique and there's open mat free training. But there's also drills like this. You, you get very specific. Then I just try me. So do it one time, just play around, throw your left leg over, go. Yep, just like that. That was actually very good. Yeah, okay, fall back, fall to your side, fall. Yeah. Okay, by the way, you see what he's doing? That's fine. Lock it up. All right. Put pressure. Go. Okay. Pressure. Go. go. Pressure. There we go. Good job. That did good detail. You fell your back. I was going to see if you did. Good job. Okay. Uh, this is something I'm glad you do that. Let's set up that up. What is wrong with this? Or is there anything wrong with it? Is this bad? No, it's very good. But it's hard to get here usually. Okay. If I had the chance to finish him here, I'll finish him. If I was already here, fine. But I would not abandon this situation to go here. Okay? So uh, that's something that I see people do. They have the leg and they can finish it. And they try to swing the arm and then lose the position. So it's not wrong. There's certain scenarios such as full guard. Oh, right There's one like this, for instance, where I step through and I have your leg. I have it up. That, that's one right there to work. Okay. That's not my favorite knee lock, but that's a possibility. So if I was you, I'd fall on my shoulders and just finish it like that. Okay. Uh, but now one more time. All right. So as you go over, go. Train. All right. So now I'm going. Okay. That could happen, right? So that's right. Now, now, next time I'm gonna do it again. Face me. So, so don't fall. Okay. You get to where? Ready? Go. Go. Face me. Face me. Face me. Look. See. You see how he, he, at some point, you develop your muscles to where, uh, maybe I have his back a little bit, but take your leg out. Step, step, step around, step around. Also, there, you get to where it's not just, oh, I made a mistake, it's over. It's like, I can, I can, I can fix what I'm doing in the middle of the move. And that way, like any kind of drill, you can really get specialized and work on your style.